In today's video, I'm going to be going over how I create tutorials on YouTube, the software I use, my setup, so that hopefully I can convince you to start creating your very own tutorials on YouTube because creating tutorials is not only a great way to share your knowledge, but it's also a great way to really show your understanding on a subject. I mean, I started creating tutorials four years ago and now my channel has grown to over 100,000 subscribers. Anyway, before we get started, I want to just talk about how I got into it because this might inspire you a bit. Well, four years ago when the coronavirus just came into our existence or came into existence, I had nothing to do. I didn't have literally anything to do. And back in the day, I had an Android phone. And since the existence of Android, I've always hated the apps from the App Store, from the Google Play Store. None of them did anything I wanted and they were always filled with ads. So at that point of time, I thought, okay, I'll just create my own app. And that's where this all started. I learned very quickly that you cannot create an app that easily by dragging and dropping elements. Back in the day, you had to learn Java and then you had to learn XML and you had to use something called Android Studio. And I mean, even today you have to use Android Studio more or less to create your applications. If you want to create native Android applications, I learned that to create an app, graphic design wasn't enough. You also need to know how to program. So at that point of time, I started watching some YouTube tutorials and I thought, hey, this is actually a lot of fun. It's really cool. But what I noticed really quickly is that a lot of videos on YouTube had very poor quality or were just outdated. And that's when I started creating my own tutorials. I started with the most simple concept in the world, which is an increment counter or how to install Android Studio. I started as simple as possible because what I had in mind was, okay, I'll share how I do things and then hopefully some experts or some other people can share how they do things in the comment section down below. So we would both be learning through the experience of my YouTube tutorial. And in the long run, here I am. Now I create Python tutorials because Python is my favorite language. It's one of the easiest to use and it's one of the most powerful for the amount of effort you have to put into it. Anyway, all I want to say is that you don't need to be a master or an expert of what you're teaching because when you are starting off, Sometimes the tutorial that you upload might be the only tutorial that is on the internet. And sometimes having one tutorial is better than having no tutorial because even if you teach a wrong practice or whatever, your tutorial might be the last resort for many people. So all I want to say is don't worry about messing it up at the beginning. You're going to learn a lot as you create videos and don't be afraid to do it in your own language. There are plenty of tutorials in English, but of course, not everyone in the world speaks English, which probably comes off as a major shock to most English speakers. Anyway, next I want to go over a bit of my setup because I'm actually an incredibly lazy person who hates editing and hates all of these complicated setups when it comes to creating videos. I have the most minimalistic setup and it has been like this since day one. Now, nothing you see here has been edited. I have my code editor, which is PyCharm. I'm using QuickTime Player, which is built in to Apple. This is completely vanilla. I can't record audio through QuickTime Player that easily. It's just good for recording the screen. And also with QuickTime Player, I'm currently recording my face using the face cam. And this has not been edited in. This is literally just an overlay that I can drag around and that reflects my face so that we have a closer bond when it comes to learning how to code. But as you can see, none of this required any editing. What requires editing is me messing up my words very often. If you pay attention to my webcam throughout this video, you'll see a lot of cuts because I do not speak very clearly all of the time. Anyway, to get started, I recommend downloading the easiest to use software for recording your screen and maybe setting up a webcam if that's what you want. You don't need to use a webcam, but eventually people do enjoy seeing a face when they are coding. Because without the webcam, you're just looking at a screen and at some text. It doesn't feel very good as a viewer. At least with a webcam, we can look at each other's beautiful eyes and we can code together. And it's okay if you have a poor quality microphone at the beginning, you might not have the money to buy a decent microphone, just get started. Start creating videos that can help other people because no matter how simple it is, there's always going to be someone who wants to learn how to do that. But next I want to share a few tips I have when you are creating tutorials. 
something that I learned over the past four years, which you could literally learn in 15 minutes with some research, but I learned through the journey of four years. The first one is please make your font size big. We are watching this on mobile. We are watching this on small screens. A lot of tutorials on the internet have incredibly small font sizes, and that means you just can't see it on mobile. It's just far too small. I usually don't bring my microscope with me when I'm traveling around or when I'm on the bus. So it's impossible for a lot of us to actually see what you are typing if you have a very small font size. And let's see if I can make it small. For example, this is illegible. I mean, of course, in 4K, if you zoom in and you have really good eyesight with your microscope, you can potentially see what's going on. But in most cases, I highly recommend you make the font size as big as possible. Where do we go from there? That's like my only major tip is make the uh, font size big at the moment. My second tip is to have a second monitor or to write your code down ahead of time so you can easily copy it and explain it as you are teaching it on your tutorial. Without a second monitor, I would probably be completely lost in most of my videos. It's so easy to make a typo when you are recording and when you're trying to explain something because multitasking is just difficult for a lot of us, or especially for me, I can barely multitask. My third tip is to not worry that much about saying something completely wrong. Of course, it's good to back up everything you say by some sort of evidence if you're showing an optimization, you want to explain that optimization as much as possible. But if you say something wrong, like calling a function a method or a method or a, f a method a function or calling a class a function, don't worry about that. We're not in a professional context. We're on social media here. And I get hundreds of hate comments per month for saying something wrong, like calling a class a function or whatever. I know the difference very well. It, it happens to make mistakes. It, it's very easy to misspeak when you are teaching something. So you're going to get a lot of positive and negative feedback no matter what you do. Don't let that get to you because what you're doing is trying to help a lot of people through tutorials. You're sharing your experience on how you built something so that other people can follow along and improve their lives with your experience. Maybe you'll teach people how to create AI and that might be suboptimal because it's not completely optimized but you might have the only tutorial that most people will understand. And that's what's great about making tutorials. Everyone has their own way of explaining something and sometimes your way will make much more sense than someone else's way. I may have over 100,000 subscribers, but that doesn't mean I'm the best programmer in the world. I'm just great at explaining things. I can explain concepts in a way that most people can understand. Unlike a university teacher that might say something that they expect you to understand, which might not completely makes sense, but they don't really care because they have a schema to follow and you just need to keep up with them. If you don't understand what they said, you're going to have to do some personal research. Also, what if the tutorial you want to create has already been done on YouTube? My advice is don't let that stop you. You have a unique way of teaching. The way you teach it is not going to be the same. Even if what you're teaching is exactly the same, the way you explain it is what's going to be different. Do not completely copy a tutorial line for line, but if you watch a video such as one from my channel or from another channel, don't feel like you can't teach what they taught. I myself have watched a lot of tutorials on YouTube and I've copied a few. And by copied, I mean I took what they were trying to teach and I taught it in my own way. I used, I followed their structure, but I just explained it in a way that made more sense to me and that I thought would make more sense to other people. So I do that on a regular basis myself. When I see someone doing something, sometimes I'll watch it and I'll try to recreate it in a much easier to understand way. And that's the message that I want to bring to you guys. You shouldn't worry about how many people are teaching what you're teaching. You should only worry about how you're teaching it. Because once again, the way you teach something might be much easier to understand than the way someone else is teaching something. Also, I want you guys to know that if you want to reteach what I taught, that's more than fine by me. Do not download any of my videos and re-upload them, but feel more than welcome to copy the examples I wrote in my tutorials and to reteach them in your own way or in your own language. That would be amazing. There are so many people that don't speak English. So if you could teach my content in your own language, I'm more than fine with that. Of course, you shouldn't download and copy any of my footage because YouTube has a copyright system and that will give you a copyright strike if you copy my footage. But if you copy the text and you teach it in your own way, in your own language, with your own voice, etc., etc., that's perfectly fine. 
So that's actually all I wanted to talk about in today's video. I just thought I would make this video because sometimes I read the comments and I see that people are just so good at explaining things much better than myself. And it's just a shame that these people are not actively teaching on YouTube or sharing their experience through some sort of video so other people can learn. Anyway, let me know what you think about all this in the comment section down below. But otherwise, with all that being said, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.